Hello, and welcome to Vanilla Minecraft. We are here today to look at the basics of modern Minecraft. And I thought it was a good place to start in vanilla so that people could see what the differences actually are with the basic vanilla, sorry, basic modern compared to a vanilla starting point. As you can see, this is vanilla with the stacks texture pack. I have an inventory. I have a health bar and my hunger bar and an experience bar. All of which are shown at the bottom of the screen. Modern Minecraft is very close to the same as the Metal Minecraft. It just adds some changes and tweaks to the way the game is played, items that are available, and various other small things to change the way that you will play and use the game. Some of these are good, some of these increase gameplay, and some of these are bad. But in a good way. A mod pack is a collection of modifications, or mods for sure, from various different orphans combined together into one single pack. Some mod packs are created for a theme, such as Journey to the Core, which is designed all around that, that single purpose of getting you to a certain point, or making things more difficult, or making things more easier, depending on what the author of the mod pack would like to happen. Some mod packs are there just to make your life easier, some are there to make your life more difficult, and some are just there to give you the most enjoyable experience with the most, as many mods as possible. To load a mod pack, you will normally need a launcher, such as Feed the Beast or FDB, AT Launcher or the Technic Launcher. There are other launchers out there, but those are the three most commonly used launchers. So, on that note, let's get started. Ah! Okay, that's really hard to do in... F5 mode, and it will teach me for being so verbose. Welcome back. We're now in modern Minecraft. No differences so far. Let's open our inventory. Aha. One of the first differences you'll notice with modern Minecraft, at least the basics of modern Minecraft, is a mod called Not Enough Items, which adds this very, what looks very daunting selection to the side here, plus a few extra buttons. But really, any eye is very helpful because you can find all the items that are available in game will be available on this page. For example, there are, and just for Minecraft, there are three pages of items in the game. And just clicking previous and next will let you cycle through them. Now, let me get some resources to show you some more cool features of NEI. Now that I have some resources, let's craft a stick. In normal circumstances, Crafting a stick would be done that way. But NEI does provide some extra functionality for those who can't remember every recipe in the game. For example, here's the stick. You can see it, it will show you the recipe which we just used. You can also use the question mark to show you where to place items to make a stick. Or, if you hold down shift and press the question mark, it'll populate the items 
into the crafting grid for you so you can make a stick. Now, of course, with the vanilla items, there's only three pages, so finding a stick would be reasonably easy. Just navigating the pages, you would soon find a stick. But, with mod packs that could have 100 plus pages, it is much easier to search first. At the bottom of the screen, you will notice this little black box. If we were to type stick, it will filter down these results to all the items that have the word stick in it, such as sticky piston, stick, and carry on stick. Sometimes, searching for something will return more results than you're after. For example, searching for craft will return all the items which are provided by Minecraft. This could be used to search for items of a particular mod, but when it comes to making a crafting table, it could be really annoying. You would have to search for crafting, which will limit the crafting table. However, NEI also supports wildcards. You can use a star to match anything. You can use a question mark to match a single character. As shown here, a question mark will not return crafting table because it needs to be ing. But adding ng instead would leave in place. Whereas star g still returns it because it matches anything in between. It also supports regular expressions, which allows you to type a search for a carrot, followed by craft, This will return any item which starts with craft. This also allows for more complex searches. For example, you could search for craft in as well as for this. And you'll note that it returns crafting table and all items which contain furnace. In addition to this filtering, the item subsets at the top allows you to filter down specific areas. For example, it can list all the mods in the pack, various different types of mods, all the creative tabs. So, if we were to take a two right click on miscellaneous, it would now remove all items such as book. So if we go and search for book, it will not list a book because we have turned it off in here. Left clicking will re-enable it and you can see it updates. And as I said, right clicking will disable it. Another feature of NEI is the ability to quickly search your inventory. Let me quickly create a chest as an example of this. So, as an example, You can see I've populated a chest with some cobblestone, some birch wood, and some sticks. If you double click any of the search bar at the bottom, the search bar will turn yellow. This means you're in filter mode, and searching here, or highlight mode, searching here will return all items that match. For example, you can see it's greyed out everything but 
cobblestone from both the chest and my inventory. If I was to search for birch, it'll highlight, it'll grey out everything but the birch wood in both my inventory and the chest. You can still use the items, however they are just greyed out to make it more obvious where something is. To get out of the mode, just double click on the search bar again. If at any time you find that any eye is becoming annoying, or you do not want to display it, you can press the O key, and you'll note that everything returns back to a vanilla interface. This can be helpful in some machines where you need the space to the right of your screen. Pressing O again will return it back to its original position. You can also do it via the options screen at the bottom. Inventory and clicking any eye disabled. You'll note in this case the option button does remain so that you can turn it back on. Another handy tip in NEI is the ability to visualize the light level, which in vanilla is normally shown only in the debug screen. You can see that with the F7 key pressed, NEI will show you some crosses as to where mobs will spawn during the day. It will also show you where mobs could spawn at any time, as shown by my great creeper protection. So great that mobs could spawn here at any time. So let's fix that. Craft out some torches. You'll notice that when I put down torches out here, the yellow lines will disappear indicating that there is enough light here and mobs will not spawn. This is the same with the red lines in here. So just putting a torch there, the red lines disappear from where the mobs can no longer spawn because this light, there is enough light here. But over here, it is still too dark. If we place a torch there, you'll notice that the red lines disappear. Although in this case, the yellow line still remains because it's just out of range. So we place a light there, and now my little creeper house is safe from creepers. This is really useful, not just in your house, but also underground in caves. You also note that around lava, there is enough light that mobs will spawn. And down in our caves, you can see as we start getting deeper into a cave, we could start having problems with mobs. Could spawn at any time. We can place the torch down. Let's place the torch here. And you'll notice that all the red lines, well, the red lines in the immediate vicinity, disappear indicating that there will not be a problem with torches. Another handy feature of NEI is the ability to show the borders of a chunk. Those who have played enough, ex have had enough experience with Minecraft will know what a chunk is and how it works. And that you can see it in the F3 debug screen as shown in this screen here. However, NEI provides the same detail in a more visual format by pressing the F9 key. And you can see here that the red line indicates that this is the corner of a chunk. Pressing it again will show you the complete border using a green outline. Pressing it again will turn it off. Now, I'm going to find myself some food and I'll come back so, let me just finish eating some steak.
Mm. And we will get back to our next topic. Okay. So I've moved quite a distance away from the from my base. Well, not really. But if I had, one of the more difficult mm. things is finding a way back. You will notice that I have turned uh, turned on a mini map. The mm. mini map is shown in the top right hand of the screen. This can be turned on or off. And this is provided by the mod no. Junior Map. You can Junior Map has many functions, no. including the mini map, a big map, as shown mm. by the J key. So you can see where I've walked, where I've been. No. No. And it also has the ability to create waypoints. Now at the moment I don't have any waypoints. But let's say I wanted to get back to the spot easily in the future. Rather than pressing F3 and taking note of the X, Y, and Z, I can just press the B key and I can give it a name such as cows. I can give it a set of all sorts of things, but in most cases all I need to do is press save. And now you can see there is a, a point on my map called cows. It tells me how far away it is. I can press J again. And if I go up to waypoints here, you can see I now have a, a, a distance and a waypoint. And I can access various features, such as turning on and off and editing. Depending on your game mode, you may be able to teleport directly to it. You can see on the map, the journey map mod, lets you see various things such as sheep and cows and various other mobs. You can make changes to the way it looks in here. Many of these I'll leave to for you to play with. However, you can zoom in and you can zoom out. And of course, I'm shown by the blue icon here. Now, putting a waypoint here isn't that useful. However, if I go back to sport, no. walk over here, or a swim, and we can go back to our little creeper house. From our creeper house, we can now look out over the and we can see a line going right down through the sky, indicating that there's a waypoint there. And it also tells us that it's cows and how, how far away it is. This could be useful if you put your base there. So we could, for example, create another, another one here and we could call this Creeper Protection. And we save it. And now I have two cows and creep protection. If I was to walk all over here, very, very far away. So that we get lost. Because there have been many times in the nether where I've been lost and forgotten how to get home. Especially for those who are new at playing in vanilla and don't write, uh, don't know to write down the coordinates. I'm sure everybody's forgotten with their bases at least once in their vanilla time. Let's continue running just to get ourselves lost somewhere over here, maybe. I thought that was a cave. Let's continue over here. Let's go around with this tree. You can see on the mini map, there are two little dots on the side. As I turn around, the dots move with the thing. And you'll note that when you can see creeper protection on the main screen, 
the little white dot is straight ahead on the minimap. But I can also see from here where it is. This works for quite some distance. But after a while it does disappear, but the indicators on the minimap don't go away. Which does help for finding your base when you walked a long, long way. In addition, you could press J, and you'll see that creeper protection is listed on the minimap as a nice easy way. You'll also see cows is mentioned on the minimap as well. This lets you quickly find what you're looking for, and you can make notes of very useful things, such as temples, or bases, or really any that you want, and let you get back to them easily. Because now I can just walk straight back this way, and I haven't lost my base. If you want to, and you decide you no longer want a waypoint, press the J key, click on the waypoints, you can then remove the waypoint, and it will now be gone. You'll note that cows is no longer showing on the thing, but creeper protection is. Once again, if you wanted to just have a reminder of it, you can turn it off so it's no longer displayed, which now means when you look around on the map and on the minimap, it's, no it's no longer available. So I have now lost my house, even though it's right there in the distance. But you can always turn this one back on. This journey map works in the nether, the overworld, the end, and any other dimension that exists in Minecraft, or at least in modern. You can customise a lot of how the waypoints display, along with the way that the minimap is displayed. However, these are something you should play with to set up things you might like. But these, they are some of the very good examples on how to get back. Because you can focus on that location and walk straight back to your base. Let's hide away from creepers and other mobs. One thing to note is that not all mod packs include the Junior Map mod. However, they may include another mapping mod, which has similar features. You may need to investigate further into the key bindings or the information that the map provides. <coughs> ah! Crap! Of course, it doesn't really matter where you put your waypoints. If there's lava in the way, you try to swim in it. But that does give an interesting point. I've respawned, and now you can see that off in the distance there is a marker to say where I died. This is also shown on the map and the waypoint list, which can be really helpful for getting your stuff back. Really helpful until you realize you died in lava. However, once you get to your waypoint, just like the other ones, you go to your waypoints and you can remove it to set so it no longer shows on your map. Waypoint is gone. Let me head back home. Another mod which is included in many mod packs is What Are We Looking At? or Whaler for short. This mod provides a quick detail of what you're looking at at the moment. For example, now that I have enabled it, if I look down at the grass block here, you will see that at the top of the screen, a little blue box appears that says grass block. And the mod is Minecraft. This applies for any block that you look at, such as grass, flowers, Planks, wood, doors.
torches bed. In some cases, it may provide additional information. For example, if we take a look at these horses over here, you will notice it tells us the, he the health of the horse. This applies to many different entities. Friendly, foe, player. And in some cases, for more advanced mods, it will show details about tanks, machines, anything. And this is up to the developer of the mod as to what they want to show. For example, a tank may show the liquid it contains, along with how full it is. There are many scenarios you set for Wailer. I find the defaults are normally fine. However, to change the settings, press your numlock key, and then press the insert key or the zero key on your keypad. This will bring up the configuration. You can play around with some of these, but the most important one is visible or hidden, and how things are maintained. These are basically on or off when you press a certain button. You can turn on the metadata to be showed. You can sneak to toggle the box to show the details. You can also change where it is on the screen. You can hit NG by dragging it down here. Or you can move the X and Y positions manually. You can change the alpha, so how easy it is to see, and the scale. This will be a matter of preference, and sub mod packs do change the default locations. The modules will give you additional things which you can set. Because I'm just running a very basic pack here, there's not a lot of options, but you can see that the general option provides the entity health. So if we turn that off and go find our sheep again, uh, where is our sheep gone? There's a sheep. If we look at the sheep, <laughs> and I actually turn it on, you'll note that it no longer says the health in the bottom. Remembering I moved it to the bottom right corner. Of course, I don't recommend testing this out with an Enderman. covers three of the basic mods found in modern Minecraft. If you enjoyed this, in, uh, this video, or would like me to continue on with the series, please leave a like, or subscribe to get updated when more videos come out. Leave me a comment, tell me what you think, but for now...